So the next stage is applying these materials. We've got the, the chameleon material, the accessories and the metal base, um, which will have different colours, but we can't see them yet. And we're, uh, we need to look at our material assign node. So what this node is in the template is uh, what's got a group stack node. And this is a special type of node which combines other types of nodes. So we can drag, we can drag in certain types of nodes into a group stack and it uh, stacks them up. It sort of groups them all together into a single node. So material assigns, as you can imagine, you, you end up with a whole bunch of uh, material assigned nodes. So we don't want them all in the node graph. So group stacks are great for that. Um, I've just got a single material assign in this one called default mat MA for material assign. And I'm assigning default mat to root world geo. So the CEL section here is the way we sort of do a selection. I think it stands for common expression language, or I think I've got the C wrong. Um, it, it's a basic expression language that just says this path gets this material. Um, but you'll find CEL in all sorts of different nodes in Katana. Like we're going to use attribute set later, no doubt. Um, this, uh, this can be set up for CEL as well. And we do a CEL section based off paths, collections, or a custom expression. And we're going to be using those. If that sounded scary to any artists that haven't done much scripting, um, don't fret. It's not that hard. Um, in this case, I've just dragged in with a middle mouse. I've just dragged in the path into this list and it connected it. So anything that goes in the geo folder um, will get uh, this default material unless other specified further down the hierarchy. So that's sort of how it works. Um, let's go in and create some other material assigned nodes and just show you how it works. We hit the plus, that adds another material assigned node and I can rename it and this is my chameleon material assigned. Scroll down, grab my chameleon material into the assigned slot and now we need to make a CEL statement which takes care of all of that skin displacement um, section we were talking about. So for that I'm going to come to my chameleon body group and bring that over and drop it with the middle mouse. I'm going to drop it onto add statements. And what that does is adds a path statement and puts our uh, path we dragged on automatically. And you can see we now have the material on the chameleon group. Next, I want the accessory. Am I? Grab the accessories and grab the accessories group and drop that on. And to show a different way, you just can just go add statements paths and you can drop it in that way as well. And this can actually, oops, wrong group though. Let's, you can highlight them and delete them if you make an error like I just did. Um, and you can, you can add, uh, obviously with that error, you, you can stack up multiple paths in here if you like. So the next step is I want to assign the materials and we're going to do that a little different so this is going to be the metal material assign. And for this one, I'm going to make a custom CEL expression. And here, what I can do is I can grab the chameleon. I'm going to grab the top node and drop it here. And drop my metal base material on. So this is uh, not doing anything at the moment because what's happening is it's assigning the metal material at this top level on chameleon but then I've got other rules that are saying no this this one gets the chameleon mat and this one gets the accessory mat so that so these ones are lower in the hierarchy so they're winning in um, the material assignment which is how it works but what I want to do with this is not leave it at root world geo car chameleon I'm going to go slash slash asterisk metal got to spell it right though Okay, so now I'm going to need to zoom in on my render a bit. So now I have metal parts. So everything that was named metal in my scene um, is now getting metal applied to it. I'm going to go in a little closer on my actual camera. because so I've got a fairly low resolution going here on the live render, which is good to do. 
save time. Okay, so this feature of Katana becomes super handy to uh, get around. You can just select the objects in the Hydra Viewer um, and frame up on them. But we can also use the eyedropper here and click on it and find the objects as well. So just a little tip that you can, uh, you can find the objects. You can click on here and select them or copy the path. Uh, it's a really cool feature of the Katana Viewer. Um, uh, or the monitor, rather. Um, but anyway, so you can see I've got a successful material metal assignment for all these, but, but it hasn't worked on a few things as well. You can see down on the, this object, what's this called? Chameleon belly straps. So, and rings metal large. Okay, so this is a, an error that I've put in here to show you something. So CEL, what this means is we've got slash slash asterisk. So with just the slash slash asterisk, that means to go downwards through the whole hierarchy below that point and check everything. So if I was just to do that, it's going to make the whole chameleon metal. So the slash slash asterisk is a powerful thing that just force applies everything below that level. But if we put the metal word in, that means any object that ends in the word metal. So let's have another closer look at this. Rings metal large. It doesn't end in metal, it has metal inside of it. So what I'm going to do is put another asterisk on the end. So now what this means is anything underneath the chameleon that has the word metal in it at all gets turned into metal. So now we've got the metal assignment on that object. Next problem. We have some of these buckles and uh, the, these buttons here and what are they call belly strap buttons. Um, but our modeler, or me in this case, has not removed this button from this mesh. So this belly strap object uh, is all one object. Uh, so we have a problem. Katana is not a modeling tool. We cannot, uh, we cannot just select those faces and extract them in the traditional sense. Um, it's not a modeling tool. It's not supposed to be a modeling tool. Um, but we need to fix this problem. So what do we do? There's another cool trick with CEL and another thing called face sets. So what I can do, my Hydra viewer, I can come to selection and activate select faces on this object. Make a marquee selection to select all the faces and I'm going to do a contr hold control and deselect these faces underneath that I don't want. What I'm doing in the geometry in area is adding face set create node. So what I can do with that is with this selection that's still active, I can come up and go mesh location, I think I need to plug that in there, and then I go selection, adopt faces from last selection. And what that does is it creates a face set, uh, where does it do that? It does it here and it we give it a name. So I'm going to call this uh, big uh, belly strap uh, belly strap big button underscore fs so we now have a um, I'll just call it button fix or something so now we have a way to apply that material okay so now we've got our face set on the object I can actually add that in a number of different ways to my metal underscore material assignment. So the custom attribute here, we can just do a space and add another path and this can get quite long. Um, we can actually add multiple objects, so if I just drop a path in, I'm pretty sure that works. Yeah, there we go. Um, sometimes I have found that uh, you'll need to restart the live render to get the face set included. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind, uh, that sometimes it won't uh, refresh. Um, 
So when we've got two different CEL things that actually enables another feature, so you can do union or difference or intersection as well. So we can do um, this plus this with union, but if we wanted everything except something else, we could do difference um, and things like that as well, like Boolean type operations. So CEL is super, super powerful. Um, at first it might seem a little weird to people who are just used to just drag dropping a material. Um, but when you have a, a, a big scene with heaps of materials and you open that shot too and all the materials have disconnected because of a drag drop sort of approach, Katana's rule based approach like this is so much more robust. Whereas if your naming is correct, all the materials in many sorts of states, uh, many sorts of states of the model will, will get the correct materials assigned and things will often just work when you open that second shot or that bring in that different animation data. You, you don't spend most of your time troubleshooting, you're, you're focusing on the task at hand which is look dev today. So uh, we've created uh, two base materials and we've assigned the default material can just stay there because we're now applying over the top uh, with the chameleon material, the accessories and the metal. So next section is we're going to bring in our Mari textures, uh, connect them in and do, uh, do some actual look dev, get this looking a bit nicer.